Many attempts have been made to adapt The Lord of the Rings for the screen, but one of these adaptations is regarded as the worst and possibly the most forgettable. And although this version has its fans, even its director has said that it is not a very good film. And he would know. So as some of the foremost experts in obscure Lord of the Rings adaptations, we are gathered here today to determine if the 1980 Rankin and Bass Return of the King is truly the most forgettable Lord of the Rings adaptation. I'm Jess. Hi, I'm Dylan. You might remember me from such hits as uh, Dinner last night. Don't you remember? I don't like this game. I had the duck sauce. What? And today we are going to be watching the 1980 animated film, The Return of the King. I'm so, I can't, I'm, I'm ecstatic. Uh-huh. We're gonna start this off actually by watching an interview with, um, I don't know which one this is. Jess, can you tell us which, if this is Rankin or Bass that we're about to watch? We tried to do Return of the King. Uh, we did it. That belies a lot of confidence yeah. right there. But the Return of the King, we had to summarize what had happened before and, uh, and put it all together in, in two hours. Why did you, uh, just out of curiosity, go straight to the Return of the King instead of parts one and two. I didn't know that we could handle it. I didn't, I didn't know the audience would sit still for it. I was wrong. Well, at least he recognizes yeah. it. So basically, they went from The Hobbit directly to The Return of the King because right. they thought that The Lord of the Rings was just too long of a story. This movie is usually considered to be the third part of a trilogy of sorts because you have the Rankin and Bass Hobbit and then you have the Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings, which we watched. So that, that covers like up into Helm's Deep. Right. So that's about the first half of the story. And then this being The Return of the King kind of covers the last half of the story. The problem is that Rankin and Bass had no intention of this being part of a trilogy and they didn't actually consider Bakshi's film to be a part of their trilogy. So although people say that it's a trilogy, it, it is technically not. Right. This was meant to be a direct sequel to The Hobbit. It's more like a spiritual trilogy of sorts. And this movie, I believe, almost didn't get released because of the rights issues that he mentioned. Oh, wow. um, but he went to the rights holders mm. and asked for permission to use the rights and they said no. So he said, well, it's public domain because technically at the time it was public domain, so I'm gonna make the movies. And they said no, and so he did it anyway. Right. And I believe because of those rights complications, this almost didn't get released, mm. but. One of the cardinal rules of filmmaking is act first and ask for forgiveness later. So they really shouldn't have even asked. They should have just gone with it personally, I think. I think that's a really bad way to live life. It's terrible. I don't know any happy filmmakers. I am excited to watch this. It does not have great reviews, but I know that it has its fans. I think I'm pretty confident in saying we've seen worse ones. That's the thing. They're calling it like the most forgettable. One article called it like the worst Lord of the Rings adaptation, but they haven't seen what we've seen. No. Basically, if you haven't watched the rest of the backlog of this series that we've done, you should watch that after you watch this video because this is probably not gonna be the worst because we've already watched the worst. We've seen bad. Bad, bad, bad things. On that note, let's watch a movie. Wow, he blew through the cake. <laughs> He's got skills. I like that it's just a very intimate little dinner party for this yeah. for this birthday party. So many things. Old smog, dear Thorin, that terrible golem. Hey. I love that guy. I always really like that uh that design. Froggy. What's become, of, what's become of my ring? That ring I gave you and you took away. Oh, yes. I've lost it, Bilbo dear. I got rid of it, you know. Is that Paul it, McCartney I <laughs> as like Frodo? <laughs> you know, me and John were out uh, having now, drinks together and I lost the ring, you know, I gave it to a lad. I, that is what it would have been like if they had done the Beatles I, adaptation. I really wish we got that. Maybe there's an alternate universe. <laughs> we have brought with us someone who has written a ballad about the adventures of Frodo. The Minstrel of Gondor. <laughs> he was just Frodo. sitting there the whole time. So they did the intro, but now we're also going to get this guy doing quest, a voiceover of the whole story. Ding, right. Ding, when Bilbo found that shiny ring. Oh, the vibrato is back. It's a little odd to me that the context is that they're singing this song to the people that this happened to. Right. It's a little, you know, uh, Emerald Island Players in uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. 
uh, when they see a play about themselves and it gets everything wrong. Mm. This feels like that. Don't Samwise vowed to enter the orc infested tower alone to save him. Wait. Oh. He's already in Kirith Ungol. You only get to know the name of the film if you watch to this point. <laughs> I do like how Glenn Yarbrough, who did the music, uh, is now cast as the minstrel. Yeah. It's nice. I do not like his voice very much, though. Ooh. Oh, is it the power of the ring? Or is this in his mind? I'm, I'm guessing this is in his mind. Okay. Is this even happening? No, it's definitely like a dream sequence. It's kind of like those videos that are like, oh, what if Gandalf kept the ring? This is what if Samwise took the ring? I guess. No! What brought me back? Plain Hobbit sense. I know in my heart I'm not enough to bear such a burden. He was saved by low self-esteem. <laughs> oh. God. Less can be more. And There's so Glenn Yarbrough. The real return of the king yeah. was getting to hear his sultry voice again. Uh, sultry is not the word. Sexy? Wiggly. Wiggly. This is nice to see, though. I think it breaks up the pacing a little bit. That's exactly what I thought he said. <laughs> All this, minus Tirith, was... Oh, that was nice, the but way they did that. I mean, it wasn't nice. It's not nice that Minas Tirith has fallen to ruin, but those guys look gnarly. Yeah. You can tell they're bad because they have red eyes. That's true. I... big fan of the flying horses. I'm kind of... I kind of dig it as an interpretation. <laughs> Plus, they look so cool. <laughs> I really like his hairstyle. Do you think you could do that next? I could pull that off. Easy. You know, this feels obvious, but I think the issue with making only the third movie of a trilogy is that you then spend the entirety of that movie trying to establish things that you could have established in the first two movies. Yeah. Maybe that's why they don't do that too often. Yeah. Mm, funky. Are they gonna get a cool villain song? I don't get why there are with birds with moving eyes. They're made of stone. What harm can they do? I just want a pond in our yard. It's completely filled in with leaf dirt, but we have a pond in our yard. Guys, we have a pond in our yard. This just in. I am a weird bird statue, which is really funny because you just said stone birds. <laughs> I am going to have to go check out that pond later. I'll, I'll, I'll film a video for you guys. I'll throw the pond in right here. <laughs> Whoa. You can't really tell that it's a pond in this video that I'm taking right now, but it is a pond and there's that guy. He's watching over. He's the stone bird. I'm somewhat astonished by their choice to make the first, like, third of the movie just one character and his internal, internal monologue. Yeah. He's going super sane. <laughs> he had one beer. Don't drink and, and, and drink, kids. Don't drink. For Loco. Not even once. <laughs> The whips, their claws, their eyes. Don't think about it. Yeah, guys, if you're traumatized, just don't think about it. Just chill. I don't know about this. Does he have eyebrows? Um, or is it just crazy built forehead? No eyebrows. No eyebrow. Oh, It's the power of friendship. The power of love between two bros. It's really hard to have sympathy for Frodo and Sam's relationship when this is the only part of their relationship that we're seeing. Yeah. You really need those first two books or movies to build out their relationship so you can watch it fall apart. Because The Lord of the Rings was originally one book, mm. it is meant to be one story arc that follows right. through. And I think Peter Jackson's version did a fine job of that, but this is essentially if you walked in in the last 30 minutes of a movie 
and had to go, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? And try and fill in all the details. And it doesn't allow for the same level of emotional connection. Right. God help us. Tolkien's universe doesn't have a single god. It was it was oh. way longer for them to god. say, Eru Iluvatar, help us. I mean, I guess, but like... It's so easy not to try. That's, as a sound bite. I'm gonna need that as my new ringtone. <laughs> can, can that be a t-shirt? Oh. Can that be my first piece of merch? It's so easy not to try. Would you guys buy that as a t-shirt? Maybe a tote bag? I can't, I can't continue. I'd rather be singing a good old Hobbit song myself. Well, this song's cool, so maybe get with it. You actually can't make a rodent sick, like you can make them ill, but rats are incapable of vomiting. It's how they eat trash, uh, and why rat poison works, because they cannot regurgitate anything. The more you know. Help us! That is quite the angle on him. All knows. Farewell, Pippin. I go with you, sir. Then we leave this life together. <laughs> That's the spirit. Do not know death when you see it. They really made him goofy. I'm a big fan of it. You must, you, you must the, the water. water. Must destroy the ring. That was really well timed. Sleep with, <laughs> with the music, it's mind. making this sound like a good memory, because <laughs> it's like sweet dawn, folk music. Those were the days. With the dawn. You'll find problems realized. I'm so confused. Doom, the cracks of doom. Little on the nose, lyric wise. Oh, <laughs> and it's easy not to try, wasn't <laughs> Well, <gasps> this time he's green. Wasn't he blue or gray last time? Go yeah, although that could have been the darkness, but... Get it to us! <laughs> Indiana Jones! Whoa. No! They didn't move. <laughs> That's not how Indiana Jones is supposed to work. Oh, he looks so sad! Oh, he's just a baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, never mind. I'm impressed at how they're managing to layer in some sympathy for Gollum, even in the tight amount of time. And the fact that this is the only place we're seeing him. It's a little out of character, I think, for him to be doing this now at this point in the story. Right. But I do like that we're getting a little bit of his depth of character. The silent running was profoundly excellent. Their Foley guy wasn't in that day. Yeah. They did a little dance. A weirdly well animated little dance. It was like everything else is, you know, pretty straightforward, and that was just in 60 frames per second, as smooth as butter. I like the design of Mount Doom, how like drippy it all is. That's neat. Yeah. It's rare in an adaptation that we get to Mount Doom. I do like a lot of the art in right. this. Maybe not the animation, but the art itself is mostly pretty solid. Because this was animated by Topcraft. Why do I know Topcraft? <laughs> they did The Hobbit, and they also became Studio Ghibli. Right! So, I mean, it's a solid animation studio, I just don't think they gave any of it enough time or money to become something yeah. good. How not between the Nazgul and his prey, or he will slay thee! His voice is so goofy. He will. kind of sounds like Skeletor. Right? Yeah! Also, they're introducing Eowyn now? You look upon a woman. Eowyn am I. She has you hair. stand between me and my lord. She's and like kid. Finn from Adventure Time. Be gone. Tis Lord Theoden's niece. She wanted to ride with us, but he forbade. <laughs> Quick, get some expositioning. Go, go, go. <laughs> I'm glad that we got to see Eowyn. I just. And I don't know how else they could have fit her into the story to give her more context before. Yeah. But again, it's the issue of we're coming into this thing on the third act. We're coming yeah, into right. her at the end of her character arc. Well, not the end, technically, but midpoint of her character arc. So how are we supposed to get to know her at all? 
Why so glum, wizard? Does the mere thought of Sauron's vast forces overwhelm your spirit? We're also missing the, the larger context of Aragorn having been part of Fellowship, because the Fellowship is basically not right. a part of this at all. So he feels more like just a random guy who's coming in to help, which is unfortunate. Frodo and Sam are in the mountain right now. Yeah, they're, they're real close to finishing this off. Are they just waiting there for a couple of days, or are they just playing with the uh, timeline quite a bit? Doing an interpretive dance. Yeah. Everybody do the golem. Good thing he's got those little frog teeth. Wow, that was a clean cut. Instantly cauterized by Gollum's breath. <gasps> Buddy! No! I don't want to give up yet. It's, it's not like me somehow. It's they say it's not like him, but Maybe he's given so. up a lot. Mm -hmm. Remember when it's his low like self-esteem ruined his uh, chance of being oh, the most powerful strength. guy in the world? And well, that's probably comes. a good thing. Die well, Samwise. Ah! Uh, what a thing to say to somebody. You know, in the Peter Jackson version, we got a nice moment, a nice beat, where they did come to the conclusion of, like, die well, Samwise, but having that happen, like, while they're running from a lava flow feels a little indelicate. Aw, that's nice, Eowyn and Faramir. They didn't set it up at all, but no. as... Someone who knows the story, I assume that was the two of them exchanging that look. Yeah, they also didn't introduce Faramir. <laughs> well, no, but it was still nice. But alas, look. <laughs> Caught snoozes. I was just resting just my eyes. Just resting my eyes. Awesome. Sweet Bilbo, Set up and pay off. Return. And if you keep the Book of the Hobbits, as Frodo asked, ages from now, when your stories are still told, There'll be those humans who might well wonder, is there hobbit in me? Is there? Little on the nose. Roads go and he's got a big nose. So. <laughs> it's so easy not to try. It's so easy not to try, guys. That's the Let real the message of The Lord of the Rings. Drifting. That was definitely a movie. It wasn't that bad. Underwhelming, I think, in most regards. There weren't really any moments of, like, crazy bad stuff. No. The biggest problem with this movie stems from what I mentioned repeatedly throughout it, which is just that you chose the third act of the story. I, I know in the interview, he said that he did that because he didn't think people would sit through the whole story. But even then, as we've seen in other adaptations, I think it's better to do the first half of it rather than the last half of it, because the way that Tolkien wrote The Lord of the Rings was to have this eucatastrophic ending, which is the opposite of a catastrophe, in which instead of everything going wrong, like it does in a catastrophe, it ends in a eucatastrophe. Um, everything going right and the satisfaction you get from everything going right is only because previously everything was going wrong and so you really need all of the lead up to those ends because without the lead up the the you catastrophic endings don't make any sense it felt like I was watching an episode of a TV show when I hadn't seen any of the previous episodes, especially when they would do those moments where they would be like, ah, I remember that. And they would look off and it would cut to a thing that happened previously. That we have not seen before. <laughs> exactly. Or, I mean, there were some from The Hobbit, yeah. but even outside of that, there were, it felt like a clip show. Or like in an anime, when at a certain point, they do an entire episode that's just a recap. Yeah. Of the last, like, arc or whatever. Yeah. They were never, in my opinion, able to get up a lot of anticipation or a lot of momentum in the plot because they kept breaking it up with long exposition dumps and backtracking to explain what already happened. And so we were never able to get any story momentum. It was also a lot shorter than I expected in that interview. He says two hours. He mm -hmm. says it's very hard to fit as much story as they wanted to into two hours, but this is not it's two hours. It's like 97 minutes. Hour and 37. Yeah. I mean, it's hard enough to get everything in at two hours, but in not even two hours, it's almost impossible. If you enjoy this, I won't criticize, you know, I won't criticize anybody for enjoying anything, but especially this, I, I understand why people would enjoy it. It's very cozy. I think especially if I was a younger kid, that this would be a fine piece of media to ingest. I just don't think it's a very comprehensible story. Like I had a fine time watching it and I was able to find enjoyment in the moments. Yeah. 
And I think part of that also is that we both know the story of the Lord of the Rings. So we could put it together. Exactly. And we've seen a lot of adaptations of the Lord of the Rings. So we know everything that... <laughs> <laughs> could everything, happen. Yeah, everything that they didn't show in this, we've seen at least eight times now or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm left feeling pretty neutral about this. It is definitely not the worst Lord of the Rings adaptation. No. I can see how if you had only watched the Rankin and Bass Hobbit, Bakshi Lord of the Rings, and then this, this is probably the worst out of the three. It is not the worst Lord of the Rings adaptation. However, I may agree with people that say it is one of the most forgettable. And I, I think the only reason we remember it today is because it's Lord of the Rings. And it's within the context of that kind of trilogy right. of animated Lord of the Rings films. And I think in that context, I think it finishes it off pretty nicely. Kids would enjoy it. Probably. I think. It's largely bloodless and yeah. a very tame adaptation of that section of the story. Yeah. Um, uh, indeed. Well, nevertheless. Next up in this series, unless I'm mistaken, I guess it's probably the Hobbit movies. Yeah. We're gonna have to be very careful with how we watch those because it's gonna be very, very difficult for me to post a video of that because Warner Brothers is really tight with the copyright. This might clear copyright entirely because it's not available to watch anywhere. That's not just a free random download, which is where I watched it. So this might not have copyright problems, but the Hobbit movies um, definitely will. So I'm gonna have to figure out how that's gonna happen and exactly how that's gonna go. So keep keep an eye on this channel, uh, subscribe, check out my community posts and my Instagram because that's where I give a lot of updates. I also plan on starting a Patreon pretty soon. And so the Hobbit movie watch through may be better suited to watching it on the Patreon. I may do a very heavily edited down version on the YouTube channel, depending on if I can get it to clear copyright, but the full version would probably be up on Patreon. Keep an eye out for that when I eventually have the time to do that. And Dylan will be back to watch the Hobbit movies for the first time. I've never seen them. Uh, I cannot wait. If this movie was part of your childhood, I would love to hear what kind of stories you have wrapped around it. I know you guys usually have very personal experiences with these movies, especially the older ones, so I would love to hear what you guys think. And if you haven't watched it, uh, maybe give it a watch or just let me know what you think of it from what you've seen here. I would love to hear your thoughts. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it because it really helps me out in the algorithm. And if you want to see Dylan watch The Hobbit or any of the other fun content that I do on this this channel, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss a single video. You guys just remember, it's easy not to try. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope that you all have a very happy hobbity day.